learning the skills and learning and, and, and making the commitment to be to be more actively engaged in the broader political decision making process. Is that something that you that's the case for now I'm thinking more about uh, creative place making broadly defined and lots of different types of strategies, but one of the key ingredients for success that we we pinpointed across many different types of communities and many different types of interventions was this issue of leadership that they um, had you know, charismatic leaders with vision and drive and sometimes those were artists, sometimes those were politicians, sometimes those were from the private sector. Like their one case study we profiled is uh, Silicon Valley's Zero One um, SJ Biennial, which is this festival that marries uh, their technical, technological prowess with sort of our artistic soul, and that was driven by uh, tech entrepreneurs. So, so um, I think a lot of times it does take individuals or a small team of individuals to make something happen. And you asked what the characteristics are. To me, it, you have to have a charismatic, a compelling vision, but you also have to have it be um, flexible enough to build that political will and, you know, have, have it be a big sense and more so, you know, specific enough to get people excited and an exciting idea, but be flexible enough to adapt to uh, make it viable for different types of constituencies. Thanks, Anne. Um, Stephanie or Eugene, you want to comment on that before we move on to Lynn? Yeah, I actually wanted to comment for a second on your question, uh, Kate, about um, Creative placemaking and Brattleboro in particular. Do you mind if I just back up one second? Because I didn't get okay. And that was that um, when you guys did the, the creative assets mapping mm -hmm. in the video that you, from the from the library meeting, mm -hmm. there's somebody who's talking about taking something like Harmony parking lot and making that into a green zone. Mm -hmm. I mean. It, it, it's really kind of compelling that these arguments that are coming up in, the, in this discussion are really out of the box and, and actually can enhance our community from, uh, from without, you know, from a way that we would never have thought of that. And so I think that, that it's really good in these six panel discussions that we, that we take note of those kinds of out of the box things because uh, of, the, of the place making that really could happen that would really change the face of our community in such a way that you did, you know, and like taking real control and removing the highway, what we would call daylighting, you know. I think that, that we really need to think big in terms of creative place making here, and I really appreciate what, what we're seeing from this. And then, second, about leadership, I think that, you know, the town, way, the way that our town is built is, is that we have a town manager and who is not elected, you know, and therefore, there's no real political push to, to get that person to do what we as a, as a community want. And therefore, I think that that's kind of a difficult situation that we need to like, look at and consider, especially because we're right now coming in you know, and, and hiring a new town manager. Maybe what we really need is a mayor. Okay, but it's just, um, we're getting, Lynn's being very patient here. Just the one comment. Um, so, do you, still have the, do you still have the question, Lynn? I said yes. It's not a question. Oh, come on. Oh, okay. yep. no, I just following up on what you said. I mean, really, to kind of sum it up, I think, is what you need is a champion. It's something what you said about an art czar, whether it's an art czar, but it's somebody who has a lot of energy, mm -hmm. who can gather the forces and really make something happen. And that's really a champion kind of a person, that people want to be part of something because they can lead you to the promised land or whatever, you know. So I think that's really what what we need. We don't really have that. Right. And it's in Providence, my boss, um, Lynn McCormick, is a real leader in the field in terms of being an art czar. But uh, some of the characteristics that make her successful, really successful, is that she is very politically savvy. Um, so she really understands uh, what people in leadership positions, all different kinds, need to be able to say, yes, I want to help you. Um, so if that's giving the politician the numbers or making sure the media has a very tight story, she is wonderful at crafting and, and using that. But she's also, so she knows how to, to, to think about the top down you know, uh, thinking, but she also knows really how to galvanize the community and bring, mm -hmm. and open the doors wide. 
um, so that everyone feels like they have a role in shaping the direction in which we're headed. And so it's something I know that Anne has looked at in Providence and has sort of flagged this is not only our political leadership, but I, I just want to, and you're not supposed to you know, talk about your boss that way, but she really is a strong <laughs> model and a great model for how to do this work. I've learned it off a lot from her. So. Okay, so yeah. quickly to Zahn and then to Jacob. So Zahn. I just would like to comment that in Brattleboro, right at this particular moment, um, we have an unusual opportunity in that there are so many leadership positions that are vacuumed right now. And there's a real opportunity, not for us to move into those spaces, it's probably not uh, liable to happen, but there's a real opportunity for us to work closely and to sort of help them understand what the shape of this community is as it is right now. Uh, with this new town plan that has a huge arts and culture chapter compared to the three paragraphs it had prior. So I would think that anybody that comes to this town and just looks at what's here would understand something about arts and culture's involvement here, but we can also help all of those people and hope that uh, one of those leaders that we don't get to elect is um, one or more of them is savvy <laughs> about, about how this can all work together and might become an ally of this whole process. And you have a challenge though because you have you have to toe a line between promoting the assets that arts and culture brings while simultaneously communicating um, the risks and vulnerabilities and you know ways in which you need support. So you know very often artists in particular are used to being supplicants, you know, hands out, please give me money. Um, and so you have to try to think about changing the, the power dynamics so that you know you take your place at the table and I have I have assets, what are they? You know, I des deserve your respect. I'm a critical member of this community, but you know, you can also support us in these ways and we can do more. So I think it's a crucial point, yeah. I, and I think that um, if I could just comment on the experience that everyone all the panels have brought here in one form or another is the degree of um, political sophistication and it takes a long time to grow and, and to develop and that, that last point from Anne, I couldn't underscore that enough in terms of my experience. So um, there, there are, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, I think, and we need to remember also uh, in some ways that um, the transition that we're imagining here and conceiving of and trying to strategize for is a, is a really long-term transition because we're actually talking about the kind of accumulated habits of decision-making and um, understanding uh, the power balance. And so what you're really asking um, the broader community to do is to reconsider its habits of interaction, and habits of engagement and decision-making. And uh, that is a very slow and difficult process. It could point to other uh, aspects of our community that have um, had perhaps more success. Um, so for instance, the um, awareness of conservation issues and natural resource issues is somewhat more readily embedded in the political decision making and the culture of the local community. Although it's fascinating and slightly odd to remember that um, Brattleboro didn't even have a conservation commission until 2008. So it formed an arts committee and a conservation commission basically within two years of um, itself. I think it was 2007 that the conservation commission was formed. In the in the political space that is Vermont, that's astounding. You know that a community of this size did not actually have a formal a formal decision making body or a formal body to consider those issues that could feed into the town plan, and could feed into the the planning process in any kind of formal way, and it speaks volumes for. Uh, you know, where Brattleboro has come from politically and socially and where it's actually headed. So on that note, I'm going to turn to um, one of our newest um, newest members of the community, Jay. Oh, thank you. Um, it's, I have one of these moments where I want to say a thousand things. I want to wish I could just download what's in my brain um, and what's in my heart as it's kind of pounding out of my chest right now. Um, I, I missed the question that sort of provoked the leadership discussion, so forgive me, I don't know what the genesis was. Um, but I, I guess I want to maybe coming off of what Lynn just said, you know, what's a leader without supporters? Um, you know, how do we identify a leader and, or, or a group of leaders um, if, you know, they're just sort of charging ahead 
and there isn't a whole body of, of support behind them um, sort of going at the same goal. Are they still leaders or are they just crazy people? Mm -hmm. So I just want to backtrack a little bit. I've been sort of swimming in these waters for um, 16 years now. Uh, I opened my first independent art gallery in 1997 when I graduated from Syracuse University and uh, then went on to co-found a 501c3 that uh, looked at AS220 very closely. We traveled to Providence and met with the leaders there. And, that was when they had their original facility, um, and now they've grown exponentially since, and they're a great model to follow. Um, yet, you know, as an independent group of, of, you know, sort of unaffiliated artists that sort of came together um, to, you know, address a lot of the issues in the community that had an economy that was circling the drain, there wasn't a whole lot of support for the independent. There was an opera and a symphony and those types of institutions, but um, there was no economic development people looking at supporting the arts. And there was no conversation at the time in 1997 about the rise of the creative class. This, this is not language that was around at the time. Um, so we forged ahead and we worked for 10 years without pay. And um, after 10 years of work and, and building alliances, and it was amazing to see the transformation in that community and what's still happening to this day. I had the privilege of being one of the first cultural district commissioners of the city of Syracuse and uh, you know, attracting a lot of um, economic development, community development through the arts in that position. Um, so I, I've seen firsthand what, you know, you know, looking at Providence, you know, I wish, you know, adopt us as a sister city. You know, that's, <laughs> I think we've done so many things in that community that we could emulate here in, in, in other communities. Um, but. You know, and I have friends that live and work at the steel yard, you know, so I know that community very well. And I would, you know, sometimes I wish I would move there and just got on that bandwagon instead of trying to bushwhack in a community that isn't there yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'll just bring it home, you know, and, and I, I'm now on the, the board of the Arts Council of Wyndham County. I'm on the board of the designated downtown organization. Um, and very much speaking this mantra, um, you know, this, this article here is talking about us going from 3,000 square feet here at this space that we could only sign a one-year lease at and trying to develop a 16,000 square foot building on Flat Street um, in very much the same model of, of an AS220, which I think it's worth mentioning for the folks that don't know about this organization that a big program of theirs is their AS220 youth program, which I've gone to meetings uh, a lot late, lately of, about you know kind of revitalizing Brattleboro and, and a lot of folks talk about the teenagers as lawyers and people need to stamp out and get out of the way and, and get a police presence to move them along. Um, so again, I, I'm excited about this conversation, but there's some things like in my heart that it becomes very emotional. Um, my partner and I um, moved here without knowing very many people. We came here to do a farmstead and learn about growing our own food, living off the grid, fell in love with the community and took a risk. We had just enough money to, fight to, to first month's rent and security here. And we looked at the overhead and we said, geez, all we have to do is bring in $300 a day. And I've worked in restaurants, I've worked in retail. That, that was an easy number, I thought, and especially because we canvassed the community and we found that this concept of a, of a creative arts center, healing arts center, vegetarian, farm to plate cafe, you know, look at the posters behind you. This is, you know, we had a one year anniversary, so we kind of put up this span of things that we did here. And over the course of a year, we're $20,000 in debt. You know, so I, we talk about supporting the arts, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be, it's all about me, but I hear things like we don't have leaders in this community, I, I want to go to the bathroom and curl. When I hear that, I'm sorry. You know, like there, there's gotta be, I mean, and there is support for the arts. This is an arts community, I'm not saying it's not, but the rubber's gotta meet the road. You know, for people that are gonna take a risk and invest in this community, there's gotta, there's gotta be real support behind that. So, any of you wanna help Jake out here? Give him out a button. <laughs> well, I just want to say, just like from the, the school of geometry about Providence and how impressed I am with Brattleboro and the work that you guys have already done um, on your arts and cultural infrastructure. I mean, you have good plans to work from. 